With so many players looking for ways to earn free money in Crossout, there's no doubt that understanding and navigating its market effectively can give you a huge advantage over the competition. In this video, we're going to cover the basic aspects of the market and we will also discuss some of the essentials you need to know in order to make a successful trade. So let's get into it. Before we jump into the market itself, I want to start by expanding on a tip I gave in my 21 tips and tricks video. Tip number 10 suggested that you should not quick buy or quick sell an item if at all possible. In case you didn't know, this can be done on PC by right clicking on a part and selecting one of these two options. The reason why you should generally not do this has to do with maximizing your profits. When it comes to trading any part on the cross out market, naturally you want the best deal, either by paying the least amount when buying an item or earning the most coins from selling an item. Using the quick buy, quick sell option does the exact opposite. It recommends that you buy high and sell low. We'll get more into proper trading techniques later in the video, but for now, let's move on to the basic aspects of the market. We'll start by getting an overview of its features. At the top, you have three tabs. The first is the market itself. Second is your current offers that are listed on the market, including buy and sell offers. The last tab is your trade history, which logs every transaction you've ever made on your current account. I used to play this game on PS4, so it's kind of funny to see the date when I finally switched to PC. Looking back at the market tab, there are several ways of finding the part you are looking for. You can do a direct search, or you can select an item by category and or rarity of the part. The default listing for parts is based on descending popularity, but you can also sort by sell price, order amounts, and now you can even search according to profit or ROI. Let's demonstrate this by doing a search for a rare machine gun that you just can't remember the name of. You select the weapons filter, and since you know it's a rare part, you choose the blue rarity. Ah, there it is, the Vector Machine Gun. The sold for column here shows the lowest current price that someone is trying to sell a Vector with 24 total sell offers. The bought for column shows the highest current price that someone is willing to pay for a Vector with 69 orders. The profit column here displays how many coins you would gain or lose if you were to buy a Vector at its current price and then immediately turn around and sell it on the market. One thing to keep in mind is that your profit amount does not include the 10% market fee that comes with selling any item. One way to calculate your earnings is by adding the profit amount to the buy price. But there's another method I like to use. Take any sell price of an item and times it by 0.9. If you end up with a number that has more than two decimal places to the right, don't try to round it up or down, just exclude it. This technique is really helpful since you won't always have the market screen accessible to you. Now, the last column I wanna talk about is the ROI, or return on investment. This column calculates the ratio between how much you would earn from this sale versus how much you would have to initially spend on it. You could also view it as a measurement of profitability. Sorting the market by this column will show you items that are currently the most profitable. And this is helpful, especially if you're looking to buy an item with the intention of selling it for a profit. This leads us to the trade and parameters window. The parameters tab displays the stats for the current item and the trade tab is where the real deals are made. Now, if you haven't played cross out in some time, the market should look a lot different than you remember, but not to worry. I'll break down the basics of how it works so you can start making some confident trades. The newest edition of the market is the history chart you see here. Now, I have to say, for the longest time, I assumed that this chart was displaying the various bid prices that players were posting for an item. But the more I looked into it, I became convinced that this chart was actually tracking completed transactions. I discussed this idea with several other players within the Crossout community, but it wasn't until I got a response back from one of the developers that confirmed my theory was true. So this chart is indeed showing you a history of completed transactions, and the prices below are the current posted bids for this item. A nice feature of this graph is the ability to view the price changes 
up to two weeks prior. On a side note, if you play Crossout on PC, you can chart an item's transaction history even further back by using the website Crossout Database, or also known as Crossout DB. Okay, back to the history graph. Each one of the yellow nodes you see here displays the average price between completed purchases and sales made within that specific time frame. The gray area shows you the lowest purchase and the highest sale that was made during that time. Hovering over a yellow node tells you exactly what these prices were and helps you to see how the item is trending. Okay, now let's move on to actually making a trade. Here is the biggest piece of advice I can give to you. When looking at these trade offers, you might think that if you wanted to buy an item, you would look here. And if you wanted to sell an item, you would use this chart. Doing this is the same as using the quick buy, quick sell option. It's suggesting that you buy high and sell low. Do not do this if you can help it. Instead, just remember this simple phrase. If you want to buy, look to the right. If you want to sell, look below the money belt. So now that we have all that covered, let's run through the process of actually buying and selling an item and see if we can make a profit. The first thing I want to do is sort the listings by return on investment. Next, I'll choose rare items only. And since I'm looking to flip this item, I wanna make sure there is a decent amount of offers to buy and to sell, which tells me there is potential for faster transactions. Okay, let's go with the Wyvern cabin. If all goes well, I can make around 10 coins a profit. Looking at the two week time chart, it seems like transactions are being made on both ends. Checking out the current offers to buy, the best price being offered is 65.01 coins. Now, we essentially have three options here. One, we could try to offer a much lower price in hopes to get an even greater deal. Two, we could offer the same price, which is the going rate, or three, we can outbid the current offer by choosing 65.02 coins. The only reason really to go higher than 0.01 coins is to deter other buyers from raising their prices. So in this case, I'm gonna keep things simple and choose option two. Now all we have to do is wait. Okay, so I successfully purchased the Wyvern Cabin at 65.01 coins. Now the same options go for selling as well. Surprisingly though, the current offer was reduced from 80 plus coins down to 60 coins with 76 offers in less than three hours. I really wasn't expecting this to happen, but nonetheless, I still wanna to try to make a profit. So I'm going to see what the highest amount is that can be offered within the price corridor. And just so you know, you can check these corridors by choosing the buy tab of any item and then clicking on these two buttons. So with that, my best offer is 76.24 coins. Interestingly enough, I got a warning message telling me I might be trying to sell this item for too much, but I'm just gonna proceed and see what happens. Okay, it's been an hour or so, and wouldn't you know it, I successfully sold the Wyvern Cabin. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention with regards to the History tab is that your sales listed do not reflect the 10% market fee. So here's a simple rundown of how we get our profit numbers. Start with the sale price of an item and multiply it by 0.9 like we talked about earlier. That gives us our initial earnings. Then subtract the purchase cost from this number and that gives us our net profit. Lastly, divide this number back into the purchase price and multiply it by 100, and this gives us a return on investment of 5.53%. And there you have it. Although the crossout market can be confusing at times, hopefully this guide made it a little bit easier to understand. And if you have any other questions about the market, feel free to mention it in the comments below. Other than that, I'll see you here next time on Crossout Basics.